Now we're going to be talking a little bit about hexadecimal and octal. If you're new to this, don't worry, don't feel like you have to be an expert. And if you already understand this stuff like a pro, bear with me as I try to explain. Now before we start, you definitely need to check out the sponsor. If you have any sense at all, <laughs> Embarcadero C++ Builder is the best IDE for C++ development. Why? Well, first off, it has a debugger, it has a user interface developer, so you can do drag and drop components. These things are pixel perfect and they work for different platforms. So one of the huge benefits of this is that you can deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, and you can build user interfaces for these different platforms to be just right for these platforms. So I'll leave a link for you guys to check it out in the description. Go give it a try. The community edition is free, so you should be able to just go get started. Check it out. Basically, hexadecimal and octal are two different ways of counting numbers. We are used to counting in groups of 10, so multiples of 10. We count all the way from zero to nine, and then once we hit 10, we add a new position, and we have one, zero, 10. Then we keep counting, and eventually we get to 100, and then 1,000, and then 10,000. Every time we add a new number, it's a new multiple of 10. Well, octal and hexadecimal work similarly, but the numbers are different. So let's look at this column here, hex, first, and then we'll worry about the octal column. So let me zoom in here. Hexadecimal is base 16 meaning there are 16 different possibilities, and every time we add a new position, it's a multiple of 16. So for decimal, we count from zero to nine and then add a position. Hexadecimal, we go from zero to 15, which the numbers 10 through 15 are represented A through F. Then when we want to represent 16, we add another position and go back to one zero. And we repeat that process, we count another 15, and then we go to two zero. Octal works in a similar nature, but it's base eight meaning we go from zero to seven, eight different possibilities. When we hit the value eight, we go to one zero. Then we keep counting and eventually we get to two zero. Basically, when we go to a different base, each position represents a multiple of a particular number, whatever the base is. So in decimal, it's 10. So for example, if you have the number 24, it's four times one, two times 10 to give us 24. In hexadecimal, it's eight times one, and then one times 16, which would also give us 24. In octal, we just have three times eight. Yes, I agree, it is a bit confusing at first. Basically, it just takes a lot of practice going from one base to the other and starting to become familiar with how to work with these bases. I have videos dedicated to hexadecimal and octal if you wanna know the deep dive, but that's really all I'm gonna give you in this video. Now what I wanna talk about is how we can create literals for these different bases. Let's go back to our code here. And what we're going to do is we are going to create a new number and we're going to set that equal to the value 30. And this is in base 10. So this literally represents the value 30. So let's compile this and run this now that we're doing an output and it prints 30. Now, if we wanted to make this a hexadecimal number, we prefix it with a zero X. So now what we're saying is that this is a hexadecimal number, it's no longer 30, it's actually 16 times three, which is going to be 48. Now when we output this, it's going to output it in decimal, so it should be four eight. And you can see we get the value 48. Lastly, if you wanted to do octal, you just prefix it with the zero and get rid of the x. So now we're basically saying this is three times eight, which is going to be 24. It'll also print in decimal, so it should be the value two four. And indeed it is. So that is how we can convert from hexadecimal and octal to decimal. If you wanted to print the number in octal or hexadecimal, we can actually do that. So let's say we wanted to go from decimal to hexadecimal. Well, we start with the value 30, and what we do is in these arrows, we just say hex, and then put another two arrows. This is from the standard namespace, so you need to prefix it with standard. And when we run this, we get the value one E. E is 14, and then the one here means one times 16. 16 plus 14 is 30. So 30 is represented as one E in hexadecimal. We can do the same thing with octal by replacing hex with oct. Oh my gosh. And then we get the value three six, which is 30 in octal. So this is just six. And then the three is three times eight, which is 24. 24 plus six is 30. So that is a little bit of an introduction to conversion between different bases. Hopefully this video wasn't too much and hopefully it wasn't super boring. Basically, this is just some information you might run into later on. C and C++, it's actually pretty important to know this stuff because often these programming languages are used for lower level stuff. 
so you might be using these things for memory addresses and so forth. Keep it in mind, maybe go through this video and practice a little bit converting between one base to the other and have a little bit of fun with it guys. Don't forget to check out the links in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.